Okay, Cass. First of all, is this Chaos Cass that I'm speaking to or Calm Cass? <laughs> this is Casanova. <laughs> is that like a merge of the two? <laughs> no. Yeah, uh, this is just me, Cass. <laughs> no and alliteration no, last, necessary. Okay. Last week, um, you kind of fell on the sword and saved poor Spencer in the game, and now he goes around and votes you out. Um, what what's going through your mind? What what happened there that he turned on you like that? Well, he didn't actually vote me out. Spencer didn't write my name down. So Oh, he voted for Sierra, right. Yeah. And um it's a numbers game at this point. And for for our numbers to work against Tasha, we had to have Kelly Wentworth on board. Spencer and Kelly were gonna follow Joe. Joe decided mm. to go with the Alpha Alliance, and that was pretty much it, you know. Um, so I don't blame Spencer. I mean, I kind of feel like this was his chance to make a move, but the move would have kind of been lateral. You know, he would have been in a, an alliance of five, and he would have needed to pull in another person or two to proceed in the game. Mm. But he wasn't willing to take that chance, you know. And that's his decision to make. It was very clear at camp that I was going home. You know, there was – it was just – everyone was saying it. I mean, people would say it to my face. You're going home, you know. Wow. So um, that's an awkward afternoon to have a crazy woman berating you for hours and maligning you <laughs> while you know you're going home and to know there's no defense because no one is going to step up and take control of the game. And the people who are controlling the game are doing a good job of it. Mm-hmm. So there was so, no blind side. You you knew it was you. No, no blind side whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And it would have been um, great gameplay for Tasha to actually orchestrate a blind side instead of going nuts and openly gunning for me. You know, I could have okay. respected that move much more than the way she went about it. Right. And we we have a fan question about Tasha from John Benuti. He's wondering, were you maybe too aggressive with her on the beach? Um, Well, you know, you didn't see a lot of things going on. And Tasha was extremely aggressive with me. We were in an alliance when we were sitting there in the shelter talking. That wasn't me fishing for information. That was me checking in with an alliance member and her feeding me a lie, you know. Uh, So... And I actually went to the beach with her to try to clarify what the motive was behind that because I also then knew she was talking about me all over camp. And so I was trying to be very calm and approach her to try to mend this fence. And, you know, she said, I don't trust you. And, Mm -hmm. you know, she laid out the gauntlet. She was still mad about Kagiyan. So I don't think it was aggressive. It wasn't like I was going to win her over. This is a woman who's been stewing for two years. Five minutes on a right. beach in Cambodia is not going to change her mind. And going back to the tribal council, um, there was something weird with Sierra's vote. Do you know why she voted for Andrew Savage? Yeah, Sierra know, knew it was me going home, and she wasn't mm-hmm. going to vote for me, and she wasn't completely on the outs with Tasha. So why upset Tasha by writing down her name when she already knew Savage was upset with her? So just write down Savage's name to avoid pissing off another person that you might have to work with. So I think it was a good move on Sierra's part. And then she didn't write me down, so she's got my vote should she make it to the end, you know. Mm-hmm. So Sierra has my vote too. I'm, I I like the way she, she handled – well, first of all, her first season was great. And then we haven't seen much of her this year, but from what we've seen, she seems to be a, a good player. Yeah, I think what happened was we got to the merge. We realized that – we were on the outs that, you know, the buy on strong was not going to work out and we really lost the numbers. And that day, you know, you had nine people who were staying together and not talking to three people who were Sierra, Abby and myself. Mm -hmm. And there was no cracking that. I mean, I tried, I tried with everybody. We were all trying to do something, but they all locked it down. And I don't think it was wise of people to give that much control to a power group of, you know, five people probably, the other four people should know they're on the bottom and should have pulled in a couple of us. 
But people become paralyzed with fear and paranoia out there, and they don't follow their gut. And I think this is going to be a season where a lot of people are going to think back to this episode and say, damn, I should have jumped over with the girls because none of them was ever going to win immunity, and, you know, I could have been in there. So, yeah. Are you so happy that you at least made it to the merge and to the jury? It, it might. I think this is the biggest jury of all time. Uh, Yeah, I'm ecstatic that I'm the Queen of Ponderosa because um, (laughs) it is the biggest jury. It was the biggest merge, and had we not merged, Savage would have gone home, and Sierra and I would have been in a great position for the real merge that we were expecting Mm -hmm. at 12. You know, you never swap tribes for one vote. It's crazy. So it was very calculated what we were doing, and then we were thrown, you know, a monkey wrench. And that's fine. That's the game. That's what makes Survivor great. But the other thing that got thrown in there, and as you saw Tasha's reaction to my being on the jury was, oh, well, we had a merge at 13. We're going to have a jury of 10, and Cass is going to be the queen of Ponderosa. So, (laughs) you know, if you're not going to win the game, which let's face it, 19 people wanted me out first. So to make it this far and, you know, last week to have not only survived my first tribal council but not even been targeted is incredible given my reputation. So then to come to the merge and have someone personally target me for something I did two years ago, you know, that's a whole other factor that came in. So to make the merge, to be on the jury, I'm ecstatic with how I did. And I'm, I don't feel that I'm out of the game. I'm, I'm the foreman of this jury. You know, I'm there. I can set the tone. The first person on the jury, I set it pregame. The most important person in this game, if you're getting to the end, is the first person you put on that jury and how you put them there. And I said I would put someone nice, and I would hope I wouldn't vote them out. So they kind of failed <laughs> on both of them, right? right. <laughs> like, uh, because you really do kind of, you know, you get your territory in there. You kind of pee on the lawn and say, this is my Ponderosa. And, <laughs> you, I mean, you know, it's you know, it's your territory, and you can do with it what you want. And, um I hope people are going to watch the Ponderosa videos because I think they're going to be not a bunch of bitter people. It's going to be a conniving little separate survivor game if I have anything to do with it, you know. They should really air those scenes because some, some, sometimes those Ponderosa scenes are just amazing to watch. They should air them on – like extend the show for an hour and a half and just give us a half hour of Ponderosa every week. They should just do a little special edition right before the finale where – they kind of mm-hmm. this. I mean, we're gonna have ten people on a jury. I'm gonna sit there and be standing with beers and cocktails for nine people, and I'm gonna be the shoulder they cry on. No wonder mm-hmm. Tasha is scared to death at tribal when she hears that, you know, because her goal was to get me out before the jury. So yeah, I mean, I don't feel I'm out of it. I think I just have a different role to play, right. and and I'm hoping as. As a jurist myself, it's very exciting to be on a jury because no one would in the right mind ever puts a lawyer on the jury. So, I'm curious yeah. what it's like for you uh, watching on TV in the weeks and days leading up to your elimination episode. Like, do you just – is it so anxiety-ridden or do you have a big party or do you kind of huddle in the corner and watch the, watch the episode under a blanket? How does that – what does that do to your psyche? Well, you know, the first time it was – it was hard, and I knew I made it to the end, so I wasn't so angst-ridden over being an you know early-ish boot. Um, but this second time, Survivor has been so much easier for me. I'm, I haven't personalized all of the the Twitter stuff and the social media. My attitude, I don't even know how to explain it. I just feel like I went into this season with such a different attitude, and – that's why when I came out of the game, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I messed up. I, you know, I, I let someone get get to me, and I reacted, and and I own that. Um, to me, this was a game this time. The first time, it was like some kind of personal mission, and it was so mm-hmm. central to my world. And now it's like, yeah, I'm on TV again. Oh, my God, there I am in my green underwear. This is embarrassing. <laughs> it's It's just like – I don't and know America to voted it. you in too, so that's a big difference. Like, you you go in this time as as a favorite, as one of you know the twenty favorites that America actually picked up the phone, or or I guess it was online and voted. Like, I want to see Cass come back. 
yeah, I mean, that that is an honor, being a fan, you know, being someone who is now part of Survivor, like really part of it, is crazy to me as someone who three years ago this very week was sitting in front of a camera recording a video and sending it to CBS. It was literally three years ago this week that uh-huh. I had my first – I applied, and they called me three days later. Um, wow, and that's so great. It's so full circle for me. I can't even explain it. And it's a place in my – it's something that happened in my life, and that, that's what it is. But it's not the be-all, end-all. And I think having that attitude is how you have to do it, or you're going to lose a lot of sleep. Mm-hmm. So, And I didn't expect to win this season. Let's face it. Nobody was going to let me get to the end. Right. And so being still part of the season, I'm still going to be in every episode. My middle finger is going to be there, my shocked looks, my think eye, <laughs> my plugged ears when people talk. You know, hopefully some of that makes it, and it'll be, you know. Yeah, so, that would be great. <laughs> and really, if you're going to go out and you're not going to win, you want to be the queen of Ponderosa because you get to eat the cheeseburgers and drink the beer and pass judgment. Mm-hmm. And you still, you know. <laughs> You're still part of it, you know. And, and you final question. Oh, yeah, that, that, that must be amazing. Um, okay, final question. Who do you want to win? Like, forget who is going to win. Who Of the 12 people that are left, um, you know, people at Gold Derby, they're predicting Kelly Wentworth to win. I think she has a great shot, but who who would you like to see win? At this point, when I got to Ponderosa, I really wanted Sierra, Kemi, or Abby to win. And Kimmy because her family needs it, and I think she's accepted her role and the role that the older lady mom must play on Survivor, which is to lay low. You know, unfortunately, I tried to break out of that role my first season, and it was great TV and it was fun and a new character for everyone, but it left me with a reputation that I can't repair. So any woman over 40 that goes on this show, I don't think they can win unless they just lay low. And so I think Kimmy's embracing that and having, being perceptive enough to do it. So I'm rooting for Kimmy. I think Abby would be a hilarious win. And then uh, my girl Sierra, you know, she's going to have to fight. She's got to put the gloves on now. So uh, well, those are that would be my dream final three right now. We can't wait to see what happens. This season is one of – you know, the best in a long time. I think it has to do with all the different tribe switches that have happened. Like, it's hard to keep track of, to be honest, who's who's in alliance with whom, but I that alliances can be broken in a second is making it, you know, really fun to watch. Yeah, I think <laughs> this, there's so many layers to this season with pregame relationships, past game relationships. There's going to be a lot of overlap and a lot of, things going on that I think are hard to make sense of unless you really understand. I think the general public who, you know, just turn it on and turn it off, it's going to be hard to follow. I think the super fans are going to get it and be, understand what's going on in the underlying areas. Uh, So I'm curious. I can't wait to see how it unfolds and how the storytelling goes. And I think it could go either really well or it will just be a confusing clusterfuck. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Cass. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Thanks. Okay.